The law of cause and effect says that for every material effect that you see in this world, there is a cause that came before it or was simultaneous to it and that was greater than it. We all understand that the universe is a material effect and so we have to somehow get down to the bottom of what could cause that. If the universe in its entirety is a material effect, then the cause would have to be something other than the effect, the universe. So it's got to be something outside of the universe. As we start to look at what answers are available to us that would give us a cause that would be outside of the universe, the atheistic proposition is in a quandary. The current atheistic idea, the current idea that is founded on materialism, the idea that there's nothing but matter and there has never been anything other than matter, it says that uh, some 13.82 billion years ago, there was a tiny singularity that exploded in something that's called the Big Bang. And then they give us an explanation as to how they suggest this Big Bang brought the universe into existence. But we want to focus right there on the singularity. From where does the atheist say this tiny ball of something originated? That's the rub because when you ask the most educated and respected atheist in the world to give you an answer for that, let's do and see what happens. Theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking stated on national television in 2011, he said that nothing caused the Big Bang. He said that singularity arose from nothing. In the book, The Grand Design, that Dr. Hawking co-authored, he asserted that bodies such as stars and black holes, well, they can't appear out of nothing, but a whole universe can. Do you see the problem with this line of reasoning? Supposedly, the idea of godlessness and the idea of materialism is a scientific idea. Supposedly, it adheres to the scientific facts as we know them. And yet, the most fundamental fact in science based on the law of cause and effect says for every material effect that we see, there has to be a cause that came before it or was greater than it. And we are then told when we say what caused that singularity that you're suggesting, they say nothing. Literally nothing caused the singularity. And then they admit, hey, you couldn't get a star from nothing. You couldn't get a black hole from nothing. But, but you could get an entire universe from nothing? Now let's look at the second aspect of the law of cause and effect. It says that the effect is not greater than the cause. The cause has to be greater than the effect. How big is our universe. How big does the cause have to be? As you start looking at the universe and trying to get your mind around the massive size of it, you realize that it's almost so big that you can't even understand its dimensions. You see, for years people thought that you could literally count the stars and they tried that and they would give numbers like 1,050 or 777, but then we realized, hold on, you can't count those stars. Not only can you not count the stars, but you can't really even count all the galaxies. We live in the Milky Way galaxy, and they suggested for many years that the Milky Way galaxy had about 100 billion stars in it. And then they came out not long ago, in fact, just a few months, and said we were wrong about the 100 billion stars. Actually, we think there might be three or four times that. Might be 300 billion stars in one galaxy. That's the Milky Way galaxy, and it's a medium-sized galaxy. You know, if you were to try to count to the number 100 billion, it would take you about 27,000 years counting 10,000 every single day, and every one of those would represent a star, one, two, three, four, five. And some of those stars might be the size of our sun, medium-sized star. It'll hold one million Earths, but there are some stars that are hundreds of times bigger than our sun. So a star that is 450 times bigger than the sun would hold 450 million Earths. And then if we were to say, well, how big is the entire universe? If you were to try to go from one end of the universe to the other end of the universe, and you could literally travel the speed of light, 
186,000 miles per second. That's seven times around the equator of the globe in a single second, and you started on one end of the universe, and you were traveling the speed of light, and you were trying to go to the other end? You're talking about 43 billion years or longer. One of the researchers said that certain scientists believe it was 250 times that. So we have a singularity that supposedly violated the law of cause and effect, effect by popping into existence out of nothing. And then that tiny singularity that was microscopic supposedly exploded into a universe that is potentially 43 billion light years across. Well, let's see what happens when we present this information to atheists who are trying to convince us that it's true. In a panel discussion in 2012 on Australian national television, Richard Dawkins, one of the most well-known atheists, made this statement about the idea that the universe came from nothing. They asked him, how is it that something as enormous as the universe came from nothing? And notice what Dawkins admitted. He said, of course, it's counterintuitive that you can get something from nothing. Of course, it's common sense that you can't and it doesn't allow you to get something from nothing. That's why it's interesting. It's got to be interesting in order to give rise to the universe at all. Something pretty mysterious had to give rise to the origin of the universe. Counterintuitive? What does he mean by that? It goes against right thinking that you can get a material universe and stay with a material cause for it. It's counterintuitive. It doesn't make common sense. Do you know why? Because it violates a law of nature, the most fundamental law. If you're going to follow the evidence where it leads, yes, you've got to have a cause for this material universe, but the cause doesn't have to be material. In fact, it can't be material. It has to be something more than matter something super matter, something super natural. It's no surprise that some 2,000 years ago, the sage writer stated, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things which are made, even his eternal power. Eternal power? Yes. Something had to be eternal, and what we know is it couldn't have been matter. What could it have been? It must have been the eternal, supernatural God.